Hello YouTube and welcome to another Elder Scrolls lore video. This time we're talking about the Greybeards. This is a subject that was requested to me by the YouTube user American Pride, and I encourage all of you to go on and request videos since I've decided that for year 3 of lore to start doing requests way more often again and I will also tell you who requested the subject like I did way back in year 1 since people like that and I just sort of dropped it but yeah. But with that said, let's uh, let's just all put your video suggestions in the comments and let's quickly kick off with this video. As literally everyone and his grandparents have just played Skyrim and know what happens <laughs> in the main story. I won't go over the events of Skyrim and the things the Greybeards have done in that very much. I will touch on it a little bit but I will be mainly focusing on their history in this little passage. The Greybeards are an ancient order of monks that live in the ages old fortress of High Rothgar on the mountain throat of the world. They follow a strict code of doctrine called the Way of the Voice which has them de dedicating their lives to their study of the Thum, or the Voice, which is the ability to speak the language of dragons and utilize the power that comes with it. They spend their lives studying the ancient words and trying to understand the meaning and the power that comes with it. They then use this power strictly to use for the worshipping of the gods. Their lifestyle is quite challenging for an average person. To completely focus on themselves they cannot speak in the common tongue, to the point where they apparently lost their cap capacity to speak in the common tongue, and can only speak in the language of dragons. This leads them to a life of silence and study. They nearly accept everyone with an affinity of the voice into their order, but in this day and age there are not many people, and the people that are found are not always made for the life as a greybeard. Take for example Ulfric Stormcloak, he once studied for, them under t for 10 years, but left to fight in the Great War, not content with their peaceful ways, because the Greybeards do not approve of the use of the voice in combat, and if it's not an absolute necessity. And Ulfric Stormcloak wanted to fight for the Empire, and, well, despite the warnings of its masters, he went out to fight. This was actually one of the basic principles their order was founded upon, not using it for combat. Way back in the first era, the great Nordic warrior Jürgen Windkaller led an army of Nords against the Dwemer and Chimer armies. Very confident he could use the voice of himself and some of his subjects to win the war with ease. This was not the case, his armies got decimated and he then spent seven years in shame pondering on his loss and the meaning of this defeat. Ultimately he came to the conclusion that this battle had been a punishment for the gods and for his lack, lack use of the Thum. And he came to the conclusion that the Thum was intended by the gods to serve as worship, as a tool of worship and not for the sake of combat and fighting other mortals. Over the years he then founded the Order of the Greybeards, an order dedicated to the peaceful study of the voice and worshipping the gods with it. In his years of, of leading the Greybeards he established the doctrine of peaceful study as the way of the voice, is what, it was, is what he called it. And those with the affinity to use the voice came from all over to study them with them in peace. Eventually he built the fortress of High Rothgar on the throat of the world to provide a permanent place disconnected from the world and all its politics for him and his disciples to study in peace. Once word got around about his order, an ancient master of the voice decided to join this order, Parthenax. The ancient dragon had learned that the, that had learned the first humans to use the voice came flying from his hiding to High Rothgar to study the voice in peace and help the, uh, teach it to the disciples. By the way, I said in hiding, but it's not really clear what Parthenax did after the Dragon War. After the Dragon War, it's most likely that he was sort of accepted by the humans, but I believe, so I can't find the source for it, so I don't really want to say it in the video, but I believe that uh, they, they all were sort of uneasy with him being a dragon, but they accepted him. And I personally think he just became fed up with that and the moment he heard that there was a place where he could peacefully study the voice He just immediately was like, hey, I have to go there. I have to go to this Jurgen Windcaller guy on the top of that mountain 
And well, after the death of Jürgen Windcaller, Parthenax became the new leader of the Greybeards, as he was naturally the one most fit for the task of preserving the way of the voice and teaching the future generations. This was due to his immortality as a dragon and due to his huge knowledge of the dragon language since it was his native tongue. In the ages following, the Greybeards dedicated themselves to study, and they even trained some dragonborns. For example, we know that Tiber Septim studied with the Greybeards when he was identified as dragonborn. So, if you think about it, Parthenax is one of the only people that we meet in the Elder Scrolls games that has actually met Tiber Septim. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the other dragon moors that were identified in history also studied under the Greybeards. For example, Raymond Cyrodiil probably also studied with the Greybeards as he too was dragonborn and identified, but we don't have any official records for it. And that's actually something we have with a lot of things regarding the Greybeards. We don't really have any records of them before Skyrim. In the present day and age, the Greybeards, well, mostly keep to themselves, as they have always done, not concerned with the world below, not speaking to anyone, living in silence as most lose their ability to speak in the common tongue, and when they do speak, they speak in the dragon language. And the power released by that can actually cause avalanches to the towns below, due to their thundering sounds that come from their voices. So they usually just avoid speaking, as, well, it causes problems. <laughs> in the fourth era, there are only four human Greybeards. Their rep representative is Master Arngear, one of the most powerful voice users that has ever lived, as he is able to speak both the regular tongue and the dragon tongue. The other three human members are Master Bori, Einarth and Wolfgar, and of course the ancient Master Parthenax. But the other three human members are less, power <laughs> less powerful than Arngear, as they are, well, just not able to speak in the common language without using the dragon language. <laughs> They have no students at the point that the Dragonborn encounters them. The last student they had was Ulfric Stormcloak, who left the monastery to fight the war and wasn't welcome after. Since most of your students that we know of are not Dragonborn, joined the, joined the Order at a young age, I think we can safely assume that all current members that we see also joined at a young age, and have been within the walls of High Rodgar for nearly their entire lives. So if you look at Bori, Einarth, Wolfgard and Ar Arngear, I think we can safely say that, well, they just probably have nearly no memories of their lives before being a Greybeard, as they must have been in the monastery for a very long time. In the year 201 of the fourth era, the year of Skyrim, they identified the lost Dragonborn, the protagonist of Skyrim, and trained him in the understanding of his gift and assisted him in furthering his skills. They also helped him in the defeat of Alduin and gave him access to Parthenax, who helped the Dragonborn le learn the Dragon Ranch shout with an Elder Scroll. They also, for the first time in history, concerned themselves with the politics of Tamriel, as they, in the, as they actually assisted in making the peace between the Empire and the Stormcloak, well, peace, a temporary truce between the Empire and the Stormcloak so the dragons could be dealt with. This was at the request of the Dragonborn, and it's actually pretty cool, I think, that they mingled themselves with politics, but other people think that they shouldn't. <laughs> During the main quest, the Dragonborn becomes involved with the Blades, the Order of Dragon Hunters, as they, has once, as they had once been. And well, the, the Blades order him to kill Parthenax. If the Dragonborn does this, the, well, the Greybeards will expel them from their order, and they will no longer be friendly to the Dragonborn, as they are, of course, led by Parthenax, and then the Dragonborn would have killed the, his master. But nobody actually does that, right? Right? No, seriously, no Skyrim player would have killed Parthenax, I think. Overall, I like the Greybirds, but I really feel like they are not really properly implemented into the lore. For example, as I said, we know that Remen Cyrodiil was a dragonborn, and that the Order existed at the time, because it was founded in the first era. But I have so far not been able to find anything on whether he was a student or of the Greybirds or not. But with that said, I think we reached the end of the video. Leave your suggestions for future topics in the comments. If you like this video, like and subscribe. For personal contact with me, my Discord and Instagram are in the description. And if you want to support me in a more personal way, there is my Patreon. With my Patreon, you get access to, well, exclusive little vlog thingies that I upload every now and then. I recently uploaded a vlog of my Venice vacation and I actually made some Venice lore over it. So some history of Venice 
and well, it's not that professional, but it's fun if you think. And again, you get the uh, your name at the end of every video, and if there is a, something like I make a script of a video and. I just don't like how it turned out. I usually po post that script on my Patreon for people to read what could have been, but what hasn't become, if you understand what I mean. But with that said, I think it's time to end this video now, and I will see you all in the next video, and I hope you really liked it.